one of the videos in the previous module, we talked about this idea of electric field lines. This idea that we can visually represent the behavior of the electric field in space by drawing field lines that are tangent to the electric field at all points they touch. Now we're ready to extend this idea into three dimensions. Consider a uniform electric field now in three dimensions. Remember, this is just a fancy way of saying the electric field is constant at all points in space. Now consider some area in space. You could imagine this like a flat sheet of paper or a flat sheet of any kind. The electric field permeates this area like this. In this case, I've been a little bit sneaky with the way I've set everything up here. This area is perpendicular to the electric field. It makes a right angle with the electric field lines. So now suppose the area of this sheet or whatever is given by A and the electric field is given by E. Then the electric flux going through this sheet in particular, we call it phi or phi, is given by the magnitude of E times A. In some sense, the electric flux is actually related to the number of field lines that are going through this area. What I mean by that is suppose the electric field lines are twice as dense. If there's double the number of field lines, then the electric field is doubled, because like we already said before, the electric field is stronger where field lines are denser. Also, we know that the flux is doubled because, like I just said, there are twice as many field lines and the flux is proportional to the number of field lines going through. And that's completely consistent with this formula we've created here. The flux has doubled, the field has doubled, but the area has stayed the same. But let's make things a bit more interesting now. What if we turn this area through some angle? In taking this sheet and turning it through some angle, the flux has actually changed. We no longer have the same flux going through the sheet because we have less field lines going through the sheet. If that's not convincing, imagine the extreme case where the area is turned through a 90 degree angle and the field lines are now parallel to the sheet. In that case, the flux is actually zero, since zero field lines are now passing through the sheet's area, and the flux is proportional to the number of field lines passing through the area. So what do we do now? We have a formula that says the flux is E times A, but it doesn't look like the electric field or the area of the sheet has changed. And we're expected to believe the flux is supposed to be zero here? The problem is our formula here is only true if the electric field is perpendicular to the area. Once we twist the sheet, all bets are off, and we need to figure out a different way of representing the electric flux. So after twisting this sheet, I want to draw your attention to another sheet. This is kind of like an imaginary sheet. You know, assuming the first sheet wasn't imaginary to begin with, but just go along with me. This one is like a projection of the first sheet that's perpendicular to the electric field. It's a little hard to describe in words, but if we change our viewpoint, it's a lot easier to see. We see that the second sheet is almost like a shadow of the first sheet, a shadow that's perpendicular to the electric field. So where am I going with all this? Well, surely the number of field lines going through the second perpendicular sheet is the same as the number of field lines going through the first sheet. It doesn't matter what angle we turn through, as long as the second sheet is a perpendicular shadow of the first sheet, both see the same number of field lines. If both sheets see the same number of field lines, then the flux through both sheets is exactly the same, since the flux for each sheet is proportional to the number of field lines penetrating the sheet. So if we can find the area of the second sheet, then we can use that formula we started out with, the magnitude of E times the area of the second sheet will give us the electric flux going through the second sheet, which is exactly the same as the flux going through the first sheet, which was what we were really after in the first place. In order to find the area of the second sheet, why don't we consider this angle here, the angle between the two sheets. Let's call it theta. Then we can see that cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent area over the hypotenuse area. It's a little weird to think of it this way because we're not dealing with pure triangles with line segments, we're dealing with full-on areas, but the ratio is actually the same in this case.
then the area of the second sheet is equal to the area of the first sheet times cosine of theta. As a result, the flux is given by this formula, the magnitude of E times A1 times cosine of theta. And now we have a formula for the flux of the first sheet in terms of its area and the electric field that penetrates through it. But this way of determining the angle theta is too convoluted, and it turns out there's actually an easier way of seeing the same thing. I'm going to actually remove a lot of the lines here just to make the screen less cluttered, but just imagine the lines are still there. So this angle theta between the two sheets, it's the same as the angle here between the normal of the first sheet and the electric field vector. It seems unbelievable at first, but it's really just equivalent to rotating a coordinate system. Each axis rotates through the same angle here, so each angle is the same angle. So then if we want the flux through the first sheet, an alternative to theta is the angle between the electric field vector and the first sheet's normal vector. Incidentally, the projection of the electric field vector onto the normal is also given by E times cosine of theta. Cosine of theta is like the adjacent over the hypotenuse, or the magnitude of the perpendicular component of the electric field, divided by the magnitude of the total electric field. We're sort of asking here how much of the electric field vector is perpendicular to the area. The more the electric field is perpendicular to the area, the higher the flux through that area. There's a certain duality at play here. If we want to find the flux through an area, we can find one of two things. The area projection that's perpendicular to the electric field, or the electric field projection that's perpendicular to the area. Either of them will give us enough information to find the flux through the area, but usually it's much easier to find the electric field component that's perpendicular to the area. In the next video, we'll see why the notion of flux is so, so useful. See you then.